Hello and welcome back to another ClickUp tutorial. This one is for students. So if you are a student or you have like a class schedule, this is going to be for you. This is gonna show you how to manage all of that using ClickUp. And you probably only need the free plan. Honestly, uh, you can probably get by with that. If not the free plan, probably just the first tiered plan. I do have a link in the description if you want 20% off your ClickUp paid plan. So definitely use that link when signing up. Now things have become more and more virtual when it comes to work and school as we've uh, navigated the pandemic and then moved out of that. Uh, a lot of the things have stayed the same, right? A lot of the changes that we made to virtual are staying virtual. One of the good things about digitizing your tasks and doing your task management with a software like ClickUp is you can manage it from your laptop, your phone, your iPad, wherever you want. I'm personally not in school anymore, but if I was in school, I would be wanting to set things up virtually like this. And a lot of these tools didn't used to exist. Uh, when I was in school, Google Docs and Google Sheets and Google Classroom were just starting to crop up. It was very early days for that stuff. Um, but I wish that I had some of these tools when I was personally in school and in college and whatnot. This video is just focused on students, but if you wanna see more of my ClickUp videos, you can check those out in the upper right corner. I'm gonna have those linked. All right, so when you first sign up for ClickUp, this is what it might look like. Your homepage is going to be blank. Uh, this is where you're going to see all of your work. This lineup here will show you all of your top priority tasks, and then you'll have trending tasks that are getting lots of activity. This trending area is good for showing the tasks that you worked on most during that particular day. Now, if you are solely using this for school, then I would recommend going to the spaces area and creating a new space and then just create spaces for each one of your classes. So let's say for instance, my first class is statistics. I could hit next. And then from here, I could add a little icon and you can choose a color for that class. Let's go with this green color. And then here, if you are going to be working with other members or you're gonna invite like teammates to work on these tasks together, which you probably aren't if this is just for your own personal use in school, uh, you could open it up to the entire workspace so that all members have access. But I recommend just making all these classes private and then you can add people specifically for each of these classes as you want to add new members. So maybe you have a partner for a project, you could invite them to your ClickUp workspace and then you could add them later on. I'm just gonna keep this private though and hit next. Now here you can set up statuses for all of your tasks that you have within each class. So I like the Kanban one, in progress, stuck, to do, so that you know, okay, I can work on this, maybe this project is stuck and I need to ask a question on it, so maybe I'll leave that uh, as an option here for statuses. And then once a task is complete, it gets marked as complete and it's closed and archived. If you don't want the task to be closed and archived once you're done, you can create a done status right here. Now I'm gonna hit next. And here's where you turn on your click apps. So this is really going to be up to you. If you wanna track your email for whatever your professors are sending you, you can connect your email to ClickUp, which is pretty sweet so that you don't have to leave ClickUp if you have an email to send. I'm not gonna do this in this example, but you could set that up if you wanted to. I am gonna keep priority on so that I can keep track of the most high priority tasks in all of my classes. I'm also going to keep tags on. I'm gonna turn multiple assignees off. We'll keep custom fields. If you wanna track how long something takes, you can turn on time tracking. You can also turn on time estimates if you wanna estimate that out before. But uh, I think I'm just gonna stick with these four for now. If you wanna hit show more, it'll show, uh, we also have incomplete warning. So this is if you try to close a task. If you have tasks underneath that, like subtasks and whatnot, uh, that aren't complete, what this will do is it will warn you. Now we also have dependency warning. This is if a task depends on something else, uh, you won't be able to complete it if the other task isn't already complete. I'm gonna turn that off. We don't need dependencies, I don't think. Um, not gonna be necessary with this sort of workspace. Now I'm gonna hit next. And here's where you can set up your different views. So you're probably going to want to either just stick with like the calendar view, the list view, or the board view. But this is probably going to be best viewed in a board view. Now I'm gonna hit review space. And this is gonna show me my entire statistics space. And from here, I can just hit create space. Now, the neat thing is it's going to create a list right under that by default. I can delete this list and then we can just add lists as we need them. 
So let's say we have a new assignment. What I would do is I'd hit create list, new list. And here I would just write the name of the assignment. I'm just gonna call this descriptive statistics study and we're gonna hit create list. So what that will do is it will appear as a list and if you wanted to, you could color code this list. So I could click on list color and then I could hit add and edit colors. I already had these colors in here, but I'm gonna delete those just so there's no confusion. And then you could add a new color based on whatever this is. So if it's a test and you need to study for it, maybe you have a test color and then maybe you have a color for homework. Maybe you have a color for study. Maybe you have a color for uh, paper, if you're writing a paper. So you could have all of these different colors just to differentiate between uh, what it is you're working on. I'm gonna hit save. And let's just say that this is homework. And let's just say it's complete questions one through 20 on page 10 of stats book. Now, if I hit save, that's going to pop up here and I can add an assignee, which is always probably going to be you, unless you've added different members here. Like if you have other people that you're working together with on a project, you could add them in here. Um, but you really don't need this assignee column if you're going to be doing this alone. So I would just hit hide column. Uh, it's not 100% necessary. A due date though is pretty necessary for school. So let's just say this is due on Friday the 3rd. I could set that up and then I could set the priority level. So if this is a ton of points, I might want it to be like high priority. Um, you can also add a new column here and you could add different columns for uh, like drop downs, for instance, like this drop down one here, we could call this book. And then right here, we could write stats 101 book. And then maybe we have another book that's like stats explained. And then you could add column. And what that's going to allow is for you to click here and just select the book that you're referring to. There's tons of other columns that you can add in here. You could create a numbers column and call it points, for instance. And here I could enter how many points this is worth. Let's say it's worth 130 points. And now if I change it to the board view, you can see that we have this descriptive statistics study. And this is, uh, uh, it's 20 questions that we have to complete on page 10 of the stats book. So as I am working on this, I can change it to in progress or I can change it to stuck if I need to ask a question to the professor or I could change it to complete once that is all done and turned in. Now, if you want to, you can also click into these tasks and this is the task view. Now, this task view is pretty cool because you can use these special commands that allow you to either enter information in this description or complete tasks quicker or change things about your task. Let me show you what I mean. So here we could just hit slash to enter a new command and we could create a checklist if we wanted to. And I could just do like question one, question two, question three, if I wanted to. I mean, you can go in depth like that if you want. You don't necessarily have to. Or I could just simply take some notes. I could do slash heading one, and then I could enter uh, the main topic. And then underneath that, if I hit slash, and then I type in bullet, I can create a bullet list of different notes underneath this. So note one, note two, note three. Now I might hit slash div, and that'll create a divider like that if I hit enter. And underneath that, I might wanna do like slash green banner. And these banners are pretty neat. Uh, there's a bunch of different colored banners uh, and you can just create an emoji here. So maybe for this one, you just have like questions and I could turn it into a red banner. Actually, if I wanted to, that looks a little better for the questions. And then again, you could hit slash bullet list and you could add your questions here so that you have those to reference back to once you uh, go back to your professor and you uh, you know have any questions about the homework so let's say we create another divider slash div enter and you could go on to create uh, some more banners or a website link a numerical list you can change the background color so let's just maybe like highlight this here just to show an example the yellow highlight there you can also embed, so you can embed any code that you have or uh, like a YouTube video or something like that if you found a helpful YouTube video, a Loom, Google Sheets, Docs, and Slides. You can link a Google Drive. You can also link tables and lists that you have throughout your ClickUp account. So if I hit table view, 
it's, and I go to browse statistics, I can pull up the descriptive statistics study as a table. Now you can also add task actions. Let me show you what that looks like. So I'd hit slash, scroll all the way down, or if I wanted to, I could just learn these different, um, these different shortcuts. So like, let's say we wanted to change the due date. All I would have to do is hit slash D, enter, and then from there I can change the due date with basic text. So let's say that the professor was generous and he moved the due date to December 6th. I could just type December 6th and then hit enter. And boom, as you can see, that changed my due date up here from December 3rd to December 6th. And now there's no text here, but basically that's how you would use task actions. So this is great if you have a single assignment or something like that. Um, but let's say you have a larger project with multiple turn in points. So it's not just a single hand in you. Let's say you've got a hand in uh, at different junctions of the project. So what you would do is you just hit and create list new list. And let's just say that this is our semester one paper, whatever that means. All right. <laughs> create list. And what you could do is change the color. So let's see what we got here, paper. And now what we might do is we might have like a research phase, we might have a rough draft phase, and then a final draft phase. And then within that, you could add subtasks. So in my research phase, I could add a subtask of research five sources to find the best info on statistics. I know this is very generic guys, but just bear with me. This is just an example. I'm going to hit save and then I could add another subtask in here of take my own personal notes and create an outline for my paper with original thoughts. And now if I close this window, you'll see that this semester one paper has all of these top level to do's research phase, rough draft phase, final draft phase. They all have their own individual due dates, but I can also drill down into research phase here and I can see all of these tasks within this project and those have their own due dates as well. Now, every time I end up with a new class, I could just hit new space and we could enter our new class name here. Let's say biology, hit next and just go through these steps and then boom. Now we have a new space where we can create even more lists within biology. And if you want to, you can actually folder things out. So let me show you what I mean. Underneath statistics, if I want some more organization, I could create folders. So I just hit this plus button I hit new folder and then I could have a folder for homework within statistics. So create folder. Let's drag our homework into the homework folder. Hit refresh. So now this descriptive statistics study is right here in the homework folder, but I could create another folder that's like research paper, or research papers, Hit create folder, delete the list that starts out in there, and then just drag your semester one paper into research papers. And now there's a little bit more organization. So I could put all of my homework in here, all my research papers in here. And we sort of have this class hierarchy so that biology has its own area, statistics has its own area, and so on. If you go to the everything view, it just gives you a nice overview of all of the lists and all of the tasks that you have. So these are all the tasks that I currently have in my to-do list. I can move them to like in progress or stuck if I have a question. And that way I know if I have something in stuck that I need to get that resolved and I need to contact the professor, figure things out and uh, ask the questions that need to be asked. Once it's complete, I can drag it onto the complete stage and then we can start working on the rest of our tasks. I hope you enjoyed this ClickUp tutorial for students. If you have any further questions, you can ask them below. And please leave a like on this video if you did enjoy it. I'd really appreciate it. It helps out the channel a ton. So drop a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, just hit the subscribe button and also hit the notification bell. Otherwise, the subscribe button is honestly pretty useless unless you just want to favorite my channel and come back later. But if you want to be notified when we come out with videos, definitely hit the bell. All right, with that, we'll see you in the next one.